Well, howdy YouTube. I'm gonna do a quick two for one. It's gonna be a knife review, but I also wanted to show just a quick mod that I had done to my prime, well, what's my primary carry gun at the moment, because I do kind of switch back and forth. But um, a worthwhile mod. So let me unholster, because I am carrying this. It is loaded, so we're gonna unload it as is safe. Um, I still don't know why some people give stupid comments about that. I can't believe you're handling a loaded gun. It's like, if you carry a gun, you're handling a loaded gun all the time. You, ha you handle it when you take it out and you clean it, or you show it to somebody, or you put it back in the nightstand, or, or whatever. So, I don't see a problem with handling a loaded gun, whether the camera, damn it, whether the camera is on or off. I'm practicing the safe gun handling techniques of not pointing it at anything, finger off the trigger. And when I take it out to present it, in which case, like as I was doing here, it's in my holster. So I draw it, finger off, and I unload it. Don't see what the problem is, but there's always got to be some boomer uh, telling me that I'm doing it wrong, which I don't know what the way it would do it right. If I'm going to do something with the gun and safely handle it, I'm going to need to unload it. So I don't know why turning off the camera would make a difference. If anything, it shows that I'm practicing safe... Uh, you're getting to see me do it. So it should instill safe practices because you're seeing it being done and you can replicate it yourself. Anyway, all that dumb stuff aside, like and subscribe if you like this stuff. So this is what I'm carrying these days on like the hotter summer months. Unless I've got to go super, super discreet, in which case I've got a little LCP too. I slide into my pocket. But this also fits into the pocket. And that's why I actually modified this. So I got rid of the rubber grip and went with the Hogue Extreme in G10. One, I think it looks really nice. Fills the hand really nice. Perfect little palm swells. Um, but also with the rubber, the rubber attacks lint. Attacks. doesn't attack it. It attracts lint. And it also tends to... Um, there's a little bit of uh, a, a friction that you get, which is good for traction in the hand, but then it does... Um, give you, it, it does grab your pocket a little bit. And so when you go to pull out the pocket, sometimes it wants to kind of pull the pocket out with it. So I went with these. It's a little, little smoother, but really nice. Um, it's a good feeling grip. Looks real good. It'll be pretty much impervious to most anything. So thought I would just share that. Very, very cheap mod. I don't know what it costs, like 40 bucks or something like that um, for the Hogue Extreme. There's also VZ Grips and some other brands and stuff. The only thing I notice is, I don't know if they'll focus in on that, but that little piece right there, there's a little bit of protrusion there. So I'm going to have to hit that with a quick file. So I'll take these off and just hit that with a little sanding material just to take that. Because that could, yeah, actually there's a sharp point there. So for whatever reason, these are milled on a CNC machine. But that little corner right there just needs the edge taken off. Easy enough to do. And that's the good thing about G10 is that unlike plastic where it's nice and black, let's say, and then you scuff it, it's kind of gray and white, you can't get that black finish to match. I could I could scratch this up and add traction, do whatever I want. I could take a Dremel to it and then just wipe it down with a cloth. And while you might see grooves or whatever you were doing, as far as the actual colors, it blends right in. Just take like, just the oil on your hand. You just kind of rub it and it'll look like it came, oops, look like it came that way. So anyway, that's not what we're here to review, but I didn't want to make a video just for that all of three minutes. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pause this real quick because I just realized I need to go get a couple knives for comparisons. I'll be right back. All right, through the magic of hitting the pause button on my phone, uh, we're back, back in studio. So I got another Civivi. It's one I've been looking for for a while, and my local knife store um, started stocking Civivis. And so uh, I went over there and looked at one and ended up taking one home. So I've got the ones that I have. And so if you remember from some of my other reviews, I really love the Elementum. It was just a little small, but I love the fit and finish. I loved the not painted liners. I like the fact that everything is perfectly radiused, beveled. There was a lot of attention to detail on a $50 knife that put it way above what I would consider a $50 knife. That sort of satin, I mean, it's, it's, it's dull, like it's not like that, um, where it's super shiny, but it's so smooth and just, it's like a bead blast and then polished. I don't know what they do, but it, it, I love that fit and finish. I love the way that you could see it all the way around 
every edge is perfectly radius. There's no sharpening. Everything's just like melted. It's just, it's perfect. And then I got the Civivi Brazen. And while a great knife, once I put a decent edge on it, which I've heard other videos complaining about the same thing, um, you know, the black wash doesn't look as good. The G10 isn't as good. Um, the liners are painted. This is not metal. It's, it's just a piece of G10 or something like that. It did, this feels like a $50 knife, which is fine because that's what it is. It's a great knife, great action, um, decent steel. Um, this is actually, I've been calling it D2. It's not, it's some kind of Sandvik steel that's decent. But ball bearing pivot, liner lock, great action, uh, either deployed by um, thumb stud or the flipper, either way. Nice and easy, good action. Great knife, but it always left me wanting comparing it to my Elementum. This knife's just a little small for my hands, although I can grab it. I just wanted a three and a half inch version. They have that now, but it's a button lock, which I do not like, so I'm probably gonna pass on that, unless I play with one and really like it. But some people had told me there was another knife I need to get. Well, while I was waiting for that, I saw the Riffle. And this is great. It's exactly the same. It's a different design. It's the larger three and a half inch size, which really fits my hand, but um, same steel, ball bearings. I believe that one is ball bearings. Uh, is that one ball bearing? I'll have to look it up. Yeah, that one's ball bearings. Um, flipper, really nice G10, more polished. Whereas this is just very rough and feels, I mean, it's utilitarian. It's probably actually not much different. Actually, it's very similar to my Spyderco Paramilitary too. So there's nothing wrong with it. I mean, this is 160 or 170, whatever the hell I paid for it. And this is, you know, $50. So it's got that same kind of feel to it. So there's nothing wrong with that. But this just kind of took it to the next level. There's a little more lacquer in it. It's just a little more polished. It's not cut straight to the edge um, the way that that is. It's just got a much more of a nicer bevel. And when you stack this up against that, even though these knives were worth $5, this feels like it's 50% more than this. It's a nicer looking blade. It's a nicer design. The grinds are nicer. The beveling is nicer. It's just it's just a nicer finished knife. It's a more elegant, premium looking knife. Said, all right, well, here's one that people had recommended to me saying, look, if you like this sort of fit and finish, you like the exposed liner that sticks out a little bit from the from the the, the scales, um, and you just want that sort of lightweight, just clean, elegant, almost like a gentleman's knife, but just a really beautiful design. They said, check out the Asticus from Civivi. So let me just wipe this off a little because it's got a little bit of oil because it'd be brand new. So what we have here is the Asticus, and this is in carbon fiber and Damascus. It was like 80, 82 bucks or something. So uh, only a few bucks more than the regular model as I'm knocking bullets over. So I got this, well, I went over there to get it, and I was looking at it, and again, very similar. So you've got your handle scales, which in this case is actual carbon fiber. So this is, this light, this knife is a little heavier than this, but it's lighter, about the same as the riffle, but it's actually a bigger knife. So you've got the um, stainless steel liners that are exposed, and again, just beautifully finished, radiused, there's no sharp edges. When you look at this, it's just more square and it's a little more bitey, which, you know, you need some traction, but it doesn't need to be that bitey. This is just kind of that same level of fit and finish as this. Now, the specs on this, um, this is, I think, a 3.67 or 3.7 inch blade. So it is a bit bigger. It's a bit bigger than the Riffle and Spidey Para 2 for size comparison. It is just a little bit bigger than that. So this is not a small knife. What it is though, is it's light. I don't have the scale up here, but these feel about the same. I might even say this is slightly lighter than this. And I think if this had G10, then it would be heavier. Um, this has full steel liners in G10. Um, and almost as big of a blade, but the, the, the carbon fiber really does make a difference here. Um, it's got a nice deep carry pocket clip. So when you have that closed, it is a liner lock. Um, that's gonna sit really nice, really nice down low in your pocket. Um, it's a big handle. It's a little bit thin. 
Now there are times where I like a bigger handle. Um, if I'm going to do some heavy work um, where you're really pushing down, you can be whittling for a while. You have to cut a piece of wood down the side, you know, something like that. Um, the smaller handles for me want to kind of twist in my hand. So I find that I have to grip them harder to keep them in place, which then after a while your hand cramps. Um, not my right hand for some reason. It's a little more, um, uh, doesn't seem to suffer as much as a left hand from that. And I don't know, maybe my right hand's just stronger, more used to that. But in any case, it's, uh, it's a really nice knife. So, um, we do have Damascus. Uh, I'll put the link to the specs and stuff in there. I probably should have pulled that up beforehand, but I just got home and I got to go out later. So, uh, I figured I'll let me just whip this out real quick, but, um, really nice. Um, I'm definitely liking the Damascus. Um, and I talked to the guy there and it is actual Damascus. It's not a, um, you know, just a pattern that they, you know, put onto the blade. Um, it is an actual stainless Damascus. Um, action's pretty good for right out of the box. Um, it does open pretty good. That'll break in. These, I think, are bronze phosphor washers. These are not, this, the Astic is, is not. So I can tell there's a little difference in the, this is bronze, bronze phosphor. So this one's a little more broken in. So I can tell a difference between that and this. This flies open with a little more resistance or a little less resistance. It's a little bit smoother. This one for being brand new is pretty dang smooth and that will wear in as that bronze phosphor uh, wears in. But a um, little bit of blade flex because it's not a thick uh, blade stock. You can see it's uh, you know a decent amount thinner. Um, but it's a nice, really well tapered, wicked sharp point. Just a really nice thin. So it's a good size knife. What I like about this and why I at first I thought it was going to be too long and I was a little less gung ho about it because it's like this one is too small. I looked at the specs on this and it's like, wow, that's a really long knife. It's a 3.6 or 3.7 inch blade. I'm like, that's going to take up a lot in the pocket. Whereas the Goldilocks is kind of just right. That three and a half inch blade is just about perfect where I can get just a full hand on it. It's a good size working blade, but it's not so long that I can't get in there and do any kind of fine work. If I was trying, I mean, trying to think of the different uses you use an easy EDC knife for. Sometimes I'm working on something with a motorcycle. I'm trying to modify something. I bought a part and it doesn't fit quite right. And I've got to shave just a little bit of plastic off the edge to get it to, to tuck in and fit right. And so, you know, having a little bit of a smaller knife or something you can kind of choke up like on this where you can kind of get in there and just sliver away a little bit of material you know th there's there's things where the smaller knife is definitely a little bit more handy right but for general use i like having just a slightly larger knife and i'm thinking that's going to be a little bit too long i'm not gonna you know i may not like it it may be you know bigger than this but it may be bigger than i like what i do think it's cool about it is that while it is a big knife it doesn't have the weight it's going to disappear in the pocket and it's very thin. So it, that length is offset by weight and girth. That's up to you. What's more important, length or girth. Um, I've heard that there are people with different uh, opinions on that. You can, we could talk about that maybe in another discussion of Saturday morning coffee with Dave, but so far now I've only had this for a few minutes, but I did play with it for a good bit while I was there. I was looking at some bench maids. I was looking at uh, some more lion steels and MKMs, but just didn't want to get, uh, you know, I, I like the cheaper knives while I've got spider co I've got two heretics, my Vespas, even though they're made in China, those are still 150. Actually, I got three of those. Those were still, I don't think any of them was less than 150 a piece. So, I mean, I got damn near $500 in Vespas. I've got $600, $650 in my, uh, heretics um between my italian made like lion steels and um my sog kiku xr i mean i've got a bunch of knives that are in that 150 to 320 dollar range so i'm not opposed to spending money on blades i've got several i've got a couple you know two three grand worth of of you know premium not getting into the custom world but premium stuff um but I like a bargain. I like a knife that, again, doesn't break the bank. It's nice materials. I mean, you got carbon fiber. It's really well done. You got a nice Damascus blade. It seems to be pretty sharp. So let me grab a slice of paper, slice of notebook paper. Is it sharp? Yeah. I mean, that's, yeah, plenty sharp out of the box. Uh, push test. Yeah, see, a lot of the knives, when they fail the push test, they'll slice, but when you go to just push it without drawing, uh, drawing it, um, 
they oftentimes just crunch the paper. So they're not as sharp as they could be, but that, well, I gotta get one that's not wrinkled. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I'm not drawing it. So as long as you get a piece of paper, you got a piece, piece of paper that's actually a straight edge and not already bent and curled over. But yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's doing okay on a push test. Um, but it's definitely sharp. I mean, yeah. Whoop. Yeah. Can't ask more than that out of the box. I mean, I might strop it, but I don't know that it really needs it. I mean, it's just going to cut anything I'm going to need it to cut. Um, so there you have it. I want to say this is around probably three and a half ounces or so. Um, what I'll do is I'll go to Blade HQ or one of those places and I'll grab the link. Um, or I can do old time cutlery. What I'll do is I'll copy and paste the, uh, the whatchamacallits, the uh, specs into the uh, description. But I mean, I think that Damascus is really kind of pretty. And I really like the carbon fiber. Now, I would have actually preferred the regular blade like this with the carbon fiber. Because I'm not so much into the flashy, but I really wanted the carbon fiber. So I'm like, well, I could put up with that. <laughs> it's a little blingy. But I don't have any Damascus blades, so I'm, I'm kind of okay with having one just for the hell of it. But that's a really nice, I mean, that's a big, good stabby, um, even though the handle is small. If you did have to press it into something, you do have this arc fills the back of your hand. It's got good ergos. The flipper becomes a finger guard to give you a little purchase to keep it from going forward. And because it is a long blade, you know, you do have that full finger choil where you can choke up on it. So... I'm kind of impressed with it. I, I, it was recommended to me by a, by a viewer. When I looked at the specs, I didn't think, I liked the design. I didn't think I was going to like it as much as I do because of the size. I felt like I wanted it to be this size, and it's clearly a good bit bigger. That's a big knife. <laughs> but being so damn thin, being deep carry, being light with carbon fiber, I think I can make this work. So that is the Civivi Asticus. Made in China. I know. It's not a bench made. It's not this. It's not that. Whatever. I've got those two. But if you want something, th this brand is knocking it out of the freaking park. I mean, there's, a, there's got, you know, you, you think about other knives. Spyderco. You know, the Tenacious. That's their value line. Um, and they've got a sub-brand called Raven. The Bird 2. Great. Uh, great knife. And if you want to look it up, it's Bird, B-Y-R-D. Um, great knives. The Tenacious is a great $50 knife. It's not S30V and it's not a, a, a compression lock and stuff. But again, I've said this in other videos, just because it's made in China does not mean it is crap. There are decent things coming out of China. Your iPad, your iPhone. I mean, as long as the quality control's there, personally, I don't care um, if it comes from China. There's good stuff in China. There's bad stuff in China. There's good stuff in the U.S. There's cheap crap made in the U.S. It's, it's, all, it's all relative. So... I'm very glad to see that while some knives from Civivi feel like a $50 knife, so does a Kershaw, so does a uh, CRKT. Although they are getting, you know, the, the Kershaws, like their US series, the launch series, their automatics, are a step above your normal Kershaws. CRKT is upping their game. They've got some folders now in the $150 range. Same thing with Gerber. They've got their US made line that they've upped their game. But those knives are all getting up there in price. You can get a really good knife for $58. This riffle is awesome. This is, despite the fact that I love my lion steel, I love my, um, my steel wheels, the, the, the better steel wheels, the, the, the higher end Italian ones, the Tasso, the Gecko, that's like a $200 folder. I love those knives. They're great. The craftsmanship, the quality materials are amazing. But I pick up this and I'm like, okay, those knives are better, but are they four times the price better? I don't know. It's a tough question to answer. This knife, I feel like I can beat on, and if I break it or you know it wears out in time, it's not going to be a big deal. Do I want to beat on my two hundred dollars knives? Well, I can. They are built to withstand it. They better be for that price. But I don't know. I have a hard time destroying expensive things. So anyway, that is the new Asticus. New to me. They've actually been out for a little while. But back to the size comparison, you can see where it is. I think it's a great knife. Little big, if you got small hands, you may find this too big. You may find that you don't like how much of your pocket it takes up, but if you're a big goon like me, it fires nice, lockup's good, 
Um, it's like the, let's see, uh, lockup is, yeah, half, and that'll wear in a little bit. Blade centering, perfect. What's not to like? This one was $81, I think, or something like that. And then if you wanted the regular one, I want to say it was like $53 or something like that. So you pay an extra 30 bucks, but you get carbon fiber in Damascus. If you don't care about that, get the regular one. They're going to perform the same. Anyway, that's what I got for today. Got any questions? Got any thoughts? Leave them in the comments.